Good evening. Our top three stories for tonight on Stanford News. Prime Minister Paiute Channel Cha promises to send relief funds to assist flood victims as soon as possible. The unnatural death of a young pretty baffles police, and a Thai man responsible for the Chonburi murders has finally been sentenced to jail. For our first story, Prime Minister Prayut Chan-o-cha has promised to speed up the sending of relief funds to assist flood victims, despite the government being under fire for its slow response to the flood crisis. Today marks the Prime Minister's second visit to Ubon Ratchathani since the flood hit the province, his first visit on September 9th. To help flood victims, the government held a telephone this week, raising more than 360 million baht in donations. The Prime Minister, however, says that the money would need to go through proper channels before reaching the victims, for the sake of accountability. He claims that he should not overlook the law even during this time of need. Prime Minister Prayut insists that victims will be given the money as soon as possible and advises affected residents to prepare documents and be ready for inspection in order to receive aid promptly. On the other hand, actor and volunteer rescue worker Bin Win Lerud has also raised funds. Because his public donations are not controlled by the state, it can reach the victims faster and it does not have to go through certain channels. The government plans to use their donations for long-term restoration purposes, such as rebuilding, rebuilding houses, and purchasing livestock. The meteorological department warned that more rain is expected to come in the Northeast. Kikimangara 25 years of age, was found dead lying on a sofa in the lobby of a condominium building in the Dao Kanong area. Titima's stage name is Nang Lalabel as she worked as a pretty, which is a hostess who mixes drinks and entertains guests at parties. Titima was hired to work in Nantaburi on Monday and was expected to leave work at 5 p.m. Security cameras of the condominium building shows a man carrying Titima around 6 p.m. to his room. They are later seen again when the man brings Titima downstairs around 2 a.m. to the lobby and leaves her on the lobby sofa. A security guard discovered her there later and called the police once he realized she was dead. The man was later identified as Rashadet Wong Tabut. In the preliminary examination of Titima's body, a doctor found that she had died due to heart failure. A full postmortem is planned for a later date. Police Lieutenant Colonel Piero Khan Hasiri said investigators went to the sixth floor to question the man, but the man refused to cooperate. Investigators then forced their way into the man's room and have detained him for questioning. Police Major General Gen Sangrin announces that Titima's death was unnatural. No foreign substances and signs of sexual abuse were found on the woman's body, and the search of the room had found no illegal substances and used condoms. Further investigation is still being done to find the reasoning behind the heart failure of Titima. Buket pub owner Hanya Yingdang has been sentenced to life imprisonment for a double murder which occurred last year. The murder took place at Hao Jitang on July 29, as of last year. Hanya, with the aid of two other accomplices, Shad Pawina Na Muangra and Anantashai Jari Tang, in the parking lot of the tourist attraction. The gunmen are sentenced to life imprisonment. Banya had three other accomplices, one who pointed out the victims for the gunmen, who is sentenced to prison for 50 years, and the other two helped with the murder, who are sentenced to 12 years of imprisonment each. The court also ordered the six men to pay compensation of 7.31 million baht to Pamina's family and 7.32 million baht to Ananta Chai's family. Moving on to some international news, Two Wisconsin brothers have been charged for their involvement in one of the biggest manufacturing and selling of THC vaping cartridges operations in the U.S. 20-year-old Tyler Huffins has been identified as a ringleader of a complex multi-million dollar THC filled vape selling business. His brother, Jacob, 23, was charged with possessing cocaine, THC, a firearm. He was previously on parole for dealing cocaine. A third said they seized more than $1.5 million worth of THC products during the bust. They also report that the brothers based their vaping headquarters in a rented condo in Bristol, Wisconsin. Sheriff Beth from Kenosha County says the vapes were packaged and named Chronic Sour Patch. It looks like candy. It's not candy. It's highly potent drugs. The Wakrisha Police Department began investigating after the parents of the team reported to authorities about the vaping package in his room. 
A confidential informant told authorities he'd seen thousands of such cartridges in Tyler Hines' condom. The sheriff said his agencies would work with several other departments to see if the brothers are also responsible for hundreds of other people's illnesses across the country. Hong Kong's Jockey Club canceled the race planned on Wednesday after pro-democracy protesters said that they would target the Happy Valley race course. A horse part owned by a pro-China lawmaker was due to run in the race. The Jockey Club said that they canceled the race because they wanted to protect the security and safety of the people and the horses. They have been monitor monitoring the protest situation for the past three months, which often involved harsh violence. Lawmaker Junius Ho Park owns a horse called Hong Kong Bed, who was supposed to take part in the race. He was shocked by the cancellation and called protesters black-shirted thugs. A lot of people deeply regret such a decision being taken and are worried about the negative impact that it may bring to Hong Kong racing and Hong Kong as an international city, as well as the leader in the horse racing world. Ho called for a Hong Kong cleanup day on Saturday, targeting anti-government graffiti in 18 different districts. Thanks to a reporter's hunch, a volunteer team were shocked to discover a community of 40 people trapped and living without food in debris and wreckage days after the colossal hurricane Dorian struck the Abacus Islands in the Bahamas. Justin and Angela Johnson, who run Timberview Helicopters in Destin, Florida, said they had flown over this area several times but never saw any signs of life. But the next day, Justin Johnson felt an urge to go back fly a little closer and even sit down on the ground to check out reporter Vic's suspicions. We saw this thing in the distance and I asked if we could fly over it because it looks really devastated. And the pilot said, oh, it's a landfill. It probably looked like that before, so we kept going. When our husband touched down, about 30 to 40 people began climbing out of the crushed cars, crumpled homes and debris where they had been living since the storm wiped out the nearby community of Treasure Cay and basically the rest of Great Abaco Island. In a Facebook update on Tuesday night, the Johnsons encouraged those who want to help to donate to Love and Life, who have big plans to continue for continued relief and the rebuild of the Abaco Island. Stay tuned for more news on science, technology, and weather. Introducing McDonald's new one, two, three dollar menu. I'd like the my baby needs a new pair of shoes meal. Go, go, go. He just slipped. So that's two large sprites, a McChicken, and a triple cheeseburger for just six dollars. Exactly. Got something for you. No way. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. <laughs> wow. I'm gonna take a picture. Build whatever meal you want with favorites on McDonald's new one, two, three dollar menu. Go, baby. Go. Go. Moving on to our next news. The Storm Area 51 event has arrived. However, only 75 people showed up, despite the millions of people on Facebook who agreed to go. Here is Boomi for more. Thank you, Hannah. The Storm Area 51 event started off as a joke by California student Maddie Roberts. 1.2 million people showed interest in going, and that is when the U.S. military put up warnings for the people who were going. Authorities reminded people that the U.S. military base in Area 51 is a base used for combat training and to train personnel. They warned anyone who would try to get closer to the gates that they would use quote unquote lethal force. 75 people showed up on Friday. Uh, the US military reported that the people were peaceful and showed no signs of harm and they left after they gave heated warnings for them to leave. Everybody cleared the grounds by 5 a.m. Police made two arrests that day. A man caught urinating near a gate and a woman for undisclosed reasons. George Harris, the owner of Alien Research Center Souvenir Shop in Hiko, a nearby town, said that Area 51 was filled with music, movies, and extraterrestrial lore. Back to the studio. Swedish 16-year-old climate change activist Greta Thunberg delivered a message of climate change to the members of Congress in the United States. Here is Kat for more. 
Thank you, Hannah. The U.S. Congress has opened a hearing for voices leading the next generation of the global climate crisis for youth across different countries to give an appeal. The event will take place over three days in Washington, D.C. During the event, school students and workers will walk out of their schools and workplace, as you can see behind me, to protest against the government and pressure them into um, accepting the climate crisis and as world leaders um, gathered in, the, in New York for the U United Nations Summit. For students, four students were invited to meet with the Congress members in Washington, D.C. to address the matter. Among those students is Greta. On the first day, Greta submitted a testimony, but it did not contain her words. However, it did contain references to the IPCC. Because I don't want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to the scientists. On the third day of the event, Greta calls out the U.S. for being the biggest carbon polluter in history, as well as the top producer of oil. And yet, you are also the only nation in the world that has signaled your strong intention to leave the Paris Agreement. Because, quote, it was a bad deal for the USA. Chairwoman Castor comments that the U.S. that some people say that the U.S. should not um, should not reduce their carbon emissions because China and other countries are not doing enough. Thunberg rebuttals by saying that Sweden, her home country, uses the same argument to criticize against the U.S. for not doing enough either. In hopes of a better future, Greta and her fe fellow activists hopes that the U.S. will take the right step forward to take action against the global climate crisis. Back to you, Hannah. Instagram will block content that promotes weight loss products for under 18 users. Instagram announced a new policy saying that if the content includes any sort of um, supplements or cosmetic surgeries, they will be taken down. And Instagram users who are under the age of 18 will be blocked from seeing these kind of content. The change comes as the platform grapples with the impact influence of influencers promoting diet teas, supplements, and certain cosmetic surgeries. Actress Jamila Jamil, who has been working on Insta with Instagram towards this change, posted on her Instagram that this is an extraordinary win that is going to make a big difference. Influencers have to be more responsible. Over the coming weeks, Instagram will roll out a feature to allow users to report a post within the app if they believe it violates this policy. The post will then be reviewed and will be re removed if the content reviewers believe that the content does violate this new policy. Back to the studio. Politicians and campaigners said that the UK companies and police can stop using live surveillance videos. Here's Jolie for more. Thank you, Dorji. A privacy campaign group, Big Brother Watch, that has more than 18 politicians, signed a letter for a sovereign crisis. They argue that facial recognition is being adopted in the UK before it has been properly examined by politicians. Researchers have raised concern that some systems are at risk of prejudice since they are more likely to misidentify women and darker skinned people. Head of the Future Advocacy, Eric Schudery said this was due to things like color contrast on people and system being confused by cosmetics. Why some system have not been trained with enough diverse data sets of people from different demographics. You could see a situation where you are identifying innocent individuals who are from a particular minority, so people of color, which means um, that they'll be questioned by the police even though they're innocent and they may even have their details and picture kept on record despite having committed no crime. UK Surveillance and Camera Commissioner Tony Porter said there must be a set of strict standards governing how the technology is used before it is formally adopted by the police forces. Back to the studio. Now we move on to the weather forecast from the Thai Meteorological Department. As the nation experiences more rainfall and flooding, the Thai Meteorological Department reports that there will be heavy rain in expected areas of the north, the northeast, the central plains, the east, the south on Thursday and Friday. In central Thailand, there will not be a significant amount of clouds at 9 a.m. However, the clouds will be seen spreading across towards the southwest region, and there will be a scarce amount of rainfall in Bangkok area at noon. The clouds will then lessen as the day goes by. 
As we move further to the south, we can see min minimal rainfall in the morning. But as the hours pass, clouds begin to drift towards the Gulf of Thailand, where it will then intensify. If you're in these areas, be sure to carry an umbrella. Back to the studio. Thank you, Bumi. That was Chief Weather Analyst Bumi Thomas from the Thai Meteorological Department. We'll be right back with sports news and more. Welcome back. Here is Kat for Sports News. Thank you, Hannah. For football, Angel Di Maria was able to score back-to-back -back points uh, against his former teammates and team, Real Madrid as um, he starts out his new season with his new team, Paris Saint-Germain, as he, they start out the new Champions League ca Group A campaign. With the absence of Neymar and Kylian Mbappe, Paris Saint-Germain was able to take advantage of the situation. The match started out going back and forth. Di Maria was able to break the back and forth game by scoring, 14, by, by scoring a goal 14 minutes in the match from a cross by Juan Bernat. After the first goal by Saint Germain, Par uh, Paris Saint Germain, Real Madrid slowly takes momentum and tries to build their counter attack. By the 23rd minute, the pace of the game slows down. When the, 30 mi 30, when the 33rd minute came around, Di Maria was able to score another goal by an assist by Idrissa Gueye. The third was scored by Thomas Munier during the stoppage time. Real Madrid was unlucky throughout the match. A goal scored by Anthony Taylor was then disallowed because it was a handball in the 35th minute. Getting an offside goal and not being able to score a goal with extra minutes given before full time and half time. The match statistics for Paris Saint Germain are 53% 53 of possession, nine shots on goal, five shots on target, three corners and 15 fouls. The match statistics for Real Madrid are 47% of possession, 10 shots on goal, seven, zero shots on target, one corner, and 14 fouls. The next match for Paris Saint-Germain will be against Lyon on September 23rd, and the next match for Real Madrid will be against Civil FC on the September 23rd. Back to you, Hannah. Oh, sorry. Sorry, it was my mistake. Moving on to wrestling, US, US referee is suspended for two years after telling a wrestler to cut off his dreadlocks or forfeit the match. When a regional high school student, Andrew Johnson, has, was given seconds to decide before eventually choosing to cut his hair before a match last year. Recently, videos of this incident have been shared online. Some are accusing the referee, Alan Maloney, of racial discrimination. Mr. Maloney claims that Johnson violated a rule about an athlete's hair length and whether they should wear hair cover. However, Johnson should not, could not find a suitable hair cover before the match. In the end, Johnson went home victorious. Twitter users are using Mr. Maloney's action, are calling Mr. Maloney's actions as cruel and humiliating. The New Jersey Division and, on Civil Rights and the New Jersey Divi State Interscholastic Athletic Association decided to suspend Mr. Maloney for two years. State officials have offered officials and staff in high school athletics uh, to, to go into bias training. The, the Athletic Association has made it clear that the hair rule does not violate, it does not mean that the, the hair, does not violate the hairstyle, but the hair length. Back to you, Hannah. Now in entertainment news, a new Netflix show, Criminal, takes place in only one setting, a police interrogation room, which is unusual for a crime show. Criminal was released last week, last weekend on Netflix. The show has four different story versions that takes place in four different parts of the world, Germany, France, Spain, and the UK. 
The crimes in question are not shown during the entire season. Viewer op opinions are formed purely on the basis of the behavior of the criminals in the show and how they, and how they behave in the interviews. This is unique to normal crime shows where the viewer learns what truly happens. Aside from the dominant setting of the interview room, only two other settings are shown. The adjoining observation room outside on the other side of a two-way mirror and the outside of the interview room. In a normal crime TV series, viewers often see a change in, of environment to keep them enjoyed. The director and showrunner Jim Field Smith says that the minimal settings takes advantage of the show rather than a hindrance because it allows audience to focus on small things rather than being distracted by a hundred things. Uh, the, the insert of limited settings also allows the series to be shot at a quicker rate than normal. You can now watch a three episode series worldwide on Netflix. On to some interesting stories about an Australian hiker and grandfather. An Australian hiker was injured in a six meter fall down a waterfall and carried his broken leg while crawling for two days to be rescued. A 54 year old Neil Parker was on a three hour hike alone at Mount Nebo in Australia last Sunday when he slipped and fell, fell down waterfall. He broke his wrist and snapped his lower leg in half in the process. He also lost his phone during the fall. He decided to crawl to a nearby clearing where he had higher chances to being rescued. I get about a meter, a meter and a half each time before I had to stop and take a break. I just couldn't believe it. It's only three kilometers, but it took two days to cover three kilometers. I was thinking that I was never going to get there. Being an experienced bush walker, Parker packed first at supplies including bandages and combined them with hiking sticks to make a splint for his leg. He also packed painkillers and had access to water, but only limited food, such as nuts, sweets, and an energy bar. Parker said thinking of his family gave him a mental strength for him to keep going. He's saying that I wanted to be around for my kids. Brazilian grandfather crochets dolls with vitiligo to comfort children with skin disease. Chua Stengunali Jr., who has been living with vitiligo, is being praised for his craft of do crocheting dolls for children with different body types, skin disorders, and visual impairments. Stengunali started crocheting a doll for his granddaughter to have something to rem remember him by. But after photos of the doll went viral, people began asking for, the, for their own personal light dolls. So he started using Facebook and Instagram to showcase his work and began making dolls for others. People with vitiligo have told him that the dolls have been helping them cope with their struggles. Stengunali is grateful for their response, but said that crocheting isn't for everyone as it can cause irritating calluses on people's fingers. It's getting, hard, it's getting hard for him to stop crocheting because of the joy he's reaching out from people. This has been Stanford News. I'm Dorji. And I'm Hannah. Good, Good night. night.